What's up, Heart Rev Church fam? Welcome to another episode of The Breakdown. Hey, and if you're tuning in for the very first time, we want to let you know that on The Breakdown, we just spent a few moments breaking down the message from this past Sunday, and this past Sunday's message was incredible. There was so much to it, and I can't wait to get into it with our guests here tonight. So strap in, grab your coffee, grab something sweet, whatever you need to do, and enjoy this week's episode. All right, I have some incredible guests with us here tonight. Nicole, Herminia, Mr. Caleb, how you guys doing tonight? Awesome. Good. All right, so before, as I said, we get into the message and the thoughts and just breaking it down, pulling it apart, I want to just ask just a fun question really quick to kind of break the ice. Oh, and oh. so it's a zombie apocalypse, oh. all right? <laughs> and Caleb, there's three people that you're going to choose to take with you to survive the zombie apocalypse. Who is it going to be? Um, okay, so I'm going to take... I'm gonna take my brother. Oh. Okay. Take All right. Brother, okay. My, that's my number one. All right. Second person. Take my brother. Second person. Um. I'm gonna take my girlfriend. Okay. Take my girlfriend. Um. <laughs> third person I would take would probably be David Ventura. Oh. Okay. I, feel like right. I, I feel like I get bored, and I feel like he'd make me laugh, and he'd keep things light, so I take awesome. David. Okay. All right, so same question, oh. but but check it out. So it might be some hurt feelings. <laughs> no, no, but so check this out. You've only got one movie to watch, oh, and no. you only have one one food that you have to eat every single day. What would those two things be? Wow, that's a hard question. Um, one movie to watch. Wow. Uh, let's go with, let's go with like a classic, like The Sandlot. <laughs> okay, cool. All yeah, right. So then right, what right. would be your thing to eat My, forever? Forever. <laughs> as long as you stay delight, of I mean, course. I mean, can we just, <laughs> can we, uh, I'm going to say pizza because we can okay. add pizza, we yeah. can add all kinds of toppings to pizza, right? Okay. So, it just, you know, just yeah, for yeah. the variety. Okay. So Nicole, same question. But you only have uh, one song to listen to and one show to stream forever, or as long as, again, you stay alive. Well, for a show, it's no brainer, Friends. Okay. Woo! I'm not the biggest fan of The Office, but Friends all the way. Yes. I know I'm going to get killed with that. You. But... I'll come to the. Yes. I'll come with you. Yes. Hit her up in the chats right yes. now. She's not an Office <laughs> fan. Come on. I'm not an Office fan, but I'll watch it. But Friends all the way, it's my show. Um, what and was it? Song. The song? song that you would listen to forever. Ooh. Hmm. That's hard. I would say. I mean, it's like an oldie but a goodie, but How He Loves. Okay. I love that song. Wow. All right. All right. Just, can you sing for us? Spirit. Just yeah, a little maybe bit. Save, you know a, save a thing. <laughs> resurrect a couple zombies on the way. Okay. <laughs> All right. So super cool. Just wanted to break the ice for everybody so we can kind of get into the conversation. But so this past Sunday's message, we're in a collection of talks right now from good to great. Um, and this... Uh, past Sunday uh, was talking about friends with benefits and no not those friends <laughs> oh, oh okay and, and, yeah, yeah. Thank and you. no not those benefits just so you guys are, are you know it's family show um, so he pulled the story from uh, Mark chapter 2 verses 1 through 12 it's the story of the paralyzed man on his mat four guys show up they pick him up take him to Jesus um, as they get there into the house he's teaching from or teaching in it's so packed that these guys couldn't get this man to Jesus. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says that as Pastor Abe read, they got to the roof of the house, dug a hole, lowered the man into the, um, into the house at the feet of Jesus. Jesus, you know, does his thing. And the religious leaders of the day, you know, are upset because like they don't understand Jesus and the authority he's kind of operating in that he actually possesses as the son of God. Um, and, and I feel like this is happens very often in church where People can become religious, very law-like, and, and they want like almost immediate re results instead of being patient with someone's transformation. And so I feel like that's what was happening right there in that part of the story. And Pastor Abe touched on it so well. So I wanted to ask you, Nicole, what, what's, what's it meant for you to have a leader in your life who, was, who celebrated like the moment you found Jesus or that Jesus found you and you said yes to following him? and has also just been patient with you as you've matured in Christ. Like, how has that been special for you in having that leader in your life? Um, 
You know, when I first came here, I was really broken. I was in a very broken place. And just kind of starting my walk with Christ, I've always been a Christian, but just really developing an intimate relationship with Christ. And when I came here, it was all about community and love and friendships. Yeah, love and that. it was just, I met this homegirl, Yesmi, that's my Ooh, girl right there. Shout, shout, shout out to shout Yesmi. Out to Yesmi. <laughs> Dude, she is like, the best and when I met her she like loved me as I was and I was going through a really really rough time and I mean most people religiously would judge me for what I was going through and she was just there she was like no nah, girl like I'm gonna pick you up like I don't know what you're going through I don't know what it's like but I'm gonna do this with you because Come we're on, in this awesome. together yeah. and yeah. like it's really rare to find people like that so mm -hmm. Just having that friendship and it's still going strong. Like now we're there for each other and we walk together and we fight battles together and it's it's just dope. Like that's Man. what it's all about. Yeah, yeah. And that's incredible because I feel like we're moving along in such a great conversation about this because we're going to touch more about this as we move along. And so Pastor Abe said this on Sunday. He said, God wants us to receive miracles through the gift of friends, not those friends, as in Ross Geller and those friends, but those you know. Friends. <laughs> <laughs> but he also said we can be more concerned with how people perceive us on the outside rather than who we allow into our lives. And so, Caleb, I want to ask you, how have you learned to ensure that the people you're allowing to get close to your heart are more concerned about the health of your heart than the brand of your clothes? I feel like for me, that really started with what I valued. And I feel like a lot of times, like, you can change your entire atmosphere if you decide, like, I'm going to go into this different. Because, like, before I was like, dude, I got I to gotta make sure I have this and this and this and this. Yeah. And so because I made those personal decisions, the people around me then, like. You attracted those I, people. I had, to, yeah, yeah. I had to be around people That's that are like, good. if you're not going to feed this, I'm not going to want right. to be part of that. Mm -hmm. And so once I made a conscious decision that, like, I want to focus on my spiritual health, I want to focus on going the way God wants me to go. Mm. It's almost like I attract those people or I attract the people that want that same thing, even though they're not at that same place. So I feel like That's if, you, if you really want to change your atmosphere, if you really want to change the people that are around you, it really starts with like you, like, yeah, you're going to slip. Yeah, you're going to make mistakes. But sure. it really starts with that like, yo, I'm going to keep going that way and I'm just going to keep going. And like, no matter what. Yeah, so That's good. It. So choose who you are. Choose how you create the atmosphere you live in, and mm -hmm. that attracts those people. Yeah. And so that's something actually we're going to touch on a little bit later about how Pastor Abe said, you know, make sure you choose you and, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. be secure in who you are in Christ. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. that attracts those people to kind of develop right. and walk yeah. alongside with you. So, yeah. um, and, and similar to something, uh, what you just said, Caleb, is, is that Pastor Abe said, the quality of your friendships says a lot about your life, and our future is a result of the choices we make and the people we choose. And so uh, example is um, my wife, when she moved from San Diego to, to college in the Bay Area, she went, she started going to this church and her cousin started introducing her to, you know, people to, to be friends with. And, and this one girl in the church, and they still laugh about it today, like they butted heads so bad, like they were so opposite in personality. My wife was a little more quiet. Her, her now best friend, a little bit more loud, a little more eccentric. My wife is a little bit more calm demeanor. You know what I mean? But over time, they have now become the best of friends. Uh, she was my wife's maid of honor in our wedding. Wow, um, but awesome. at first, like, they hated each other. Yeah. Like, I yeah, wish yeah. they were here because they would go back and forth and <laughs> yeah. just, like, talk about it. So I wanted to ask you, Herminia, have you developed friendships here at the church that you know, you didn't, you, you, and still to this day, like you don't have the same interests, like you don't like the same music, like they, maybe you picked pizza, they would pick Chinese food, I don't know. Yeah. But <laughs> it's yeah. like in, it's in the church family that we find all of the diversity, you know right. what I mean? And we end up becoming brothers and sisters with one another. And I wanted to ask you, how, how did you kind of work that into a close friendship, even kind of not seeing eye to eye at first? Yeah, um... I think that not judging each other, you okay. know, and leaning on each other for each other's strengths, I think has been a, a, a big one for me. And like you said, you know, there's plenty of people here, you know, um, that we are friends with mm. who n we started off as friends and now we're family, mm. you know, we, so may cool. have, yeah. we may have started off butting heads or being <laughs> like, oh, I don't know, you know, yeah. um, 
But um, at the end, you know, Jesus is so amazing. He yeah. just fills us and knows who we need. Mm. And he just intertwines our paths. And at the end of the day, we all end up at his feet. Yeah. Mm. So because we have that same goal, because yeah. we have, you know, that same dream, we are able to view everyone who comes through those doors you know, as family so that yeah. we can continue to lean on each other and support one another. And, and, you know, most importantly, just lean on you for my strength because, yeah. you know, my weakness may be your strength and your strength will be, my, you know, and, sure. and vice versa. So um, there, there are definitely some difficult, you know, <laughs> relationships. You all know who you are. <laughs> Don't don't add her in the chat right now. Don't, don't add, add her. me. Don't add me. <laughs> but it's been fun. It's um, propelled us forward. It's pushed, you know, each we've pushed each other out of our comfort zone mm. to continue to grow spiritually. Yeah, and I feel like when you're when you're younger and like you were in high school and in even middle school, like you hung out with the people that looked like you, sounded like you, were into the same things as you, and as you get older. You may find similar interests, but I, I don't know about you guys. I don't want all my friends to look like me. I don't want yeah, all my friends right. to sound like me. Right. I don't even want them to be all of the same race. Like, you know, my best friend, he's white. I have a, another best friend who's black. I mean, uh, it just, it, something about that reflects our friendships, the kingdom of God. That's yeah. what's going to be like in heaven. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's Not everybody. That's what I love about this church. Come on. That we are yeah, a melting pot. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Shout out to Heart Red. We love you. Woo <laughs> Okay, so the three points from Sunday were real friends choose you, real friends cheer for you, and point three was real friends challenge you. And so let's break down point number one. So real friends choose you, and Pastor Abe said they make you a priority, not just an option. And he said that in order to be chosen, you have to first choose yourself. And in other words, um, it's really hard to develop relationships with somebody who's just uber negative all the time like just has just always a negative perspective about life Ooh, and, yeah. and you know what I mean and it's exhausting but it, it, there's something about when you connect with somebody that they they are having a trouble in life but they're they still holding on to their faith like you said you're 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 encouraging one another you're pushing each other through like yes me and, and yourself and so I wanted to ask um Caleb and Herminia um first uh, if you could share a story of how someone chose you, not because you looked helpless and, and you needed the you needed their pity, but because you said, "Look, I'm not perfect, but I do want to grow." And I, I feel like that's a really beautiful reflection of discipleship. Because when Jesus found the disciples, he invited them to say, "Look, follow me." And it could have ended right there by them saying, "We're good, bro. Like, well, thank you, but no, thank you." And yeah. like discipleship relationship. You have to accept that invitation into saying, follow me. And so I want to ask you, Caleb, first, like, how, like, share a story of how someone chose you uh, in your desire to grow. In my desire. Um, there's, like, a story that pops up into my head. Okay. Um, I remember it was after a Sunday night service. Um, I was going through, like, a lot of stuff personally. A lot of things weren't going the way that I wanted it to be or mm. the way I imagined it to be. I remember I was, um, I was crying. And I was sitting by myself because I was like, I don't want to be by anyone, but I'm at church because I was like, I don't want to go home. And I remember one of the pastor, Pastor Abe, came up to me and he saw me and he talked with me for a while. Um, and he was like, hey, whatever you're going through, like you're going through it because God wants you to get to something. Um, and then in that moment, he was like, hey, like, what are you doing on? This was back when downtown service was still going on. So he was like, hey, what are you doing on Thursday? I was like, oh, I didn't have any plans. He was like, cool, come through. Like, I'll pick you up at 12. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're going to go to downtown. And for, I think, like six months Wow. Every single Thursday at 12, no matter what was going on, he was like, I'm going to come pick you up. Like, wow. I hope you're ready. Get your clothes ready. He was like, oh, I'm not ready. He was like, well, I'm outside. Like, we're, <laughs> love we're, <laughs> we're going to go to downtown right now. You're, we're going to help set up. We're going to make, we're going to set up chairs. And then for like a couple years after that, he was like, nah, dude, like, I'm going to pick you up and you're going to go. And it was come like on. that little thing of like, man, someone trusting me and someone believing in me mm. kind of helped me be like, okay, well, like if God was able to send this random person at this random time, right when I needed it, I was like, God believes in me. This person believes in me. So there has to be something inside myself that's like worth believing in. And so I was able to be like, you know, I'm going to hold on to that. Yeah. And like, regardless of like, now I'm in a place where regardless of that, it's like, God chose me. 
when I didn't want to choose me. And so wow. it just kind of gave me that. Love like, that. Amen. Yeah. Man, awesome. this is so good. Shout out to Pastor A. We yeah. love you. Yeah, we love you, Pastor. <laughs> wow, Same how question can I Mania? follow that? <laughs> My you story also involves crying, you know? <laughs> um, the Holy Spirit will do that to you. But um, for me, the story that comes to my mind is, you know, I started coming to Heart Rev about five years ago, and I wanted to come in and go out. You know, if I can come in quietly, I can leave quietly and no one's going to say anything to me. And and um, God just kind of placed it in my heart to um, look for him and deepen my relationship with him because I knew who he was, but mm. I didn't have a relationship with him. Cause I um, grew up Catholic, so I definitely knew who he was <laughs> and his wrath and all of that. <laughs> However, um, I started attending here and I definitely said to myself, wow, this is something different. Mm. You know, it was, it was out of the norm. It wasn't religious, you know, it was more about the relationship. But I still was kind of like, eh. and God was like, you know, I said I want to have a deeper relationship with you. And that day the pastor talked about our grow classes. Mm. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to sign up. So I go, and um, at our encounter class, the girl that was sitting next to me chose me. Mm. She didn't know who I was. I didn't know who she was. I'd never met her before. She was newer to the church as well, but she was involved in a life group. Okay. And she just turned around, gave me tissue because I was crying. <laughs> 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 because I let go, and, and I, you know, I was going through, th through some things, and she said, um, I don't know you, I don't know what you're going through, but what I do know is that I go to a life group every Tuesday and we just talk about the love of God mm. and I'd love to invite you. It's incredible. And I was like, uh, I don't know you, why, <laughs> why are you really taking me to your house? You know? <laughs> But it was the best decision that I ever made. So for those of you that are not in a life group currently, I would say, please join us. Go yeah. to heartrevchurch.com. We have amazing leaders in this house who will choose you. And like Caleb said, even when you weren't choosing yourself, yeah. they would love to connect with you, to help you grow spiritually, and to help you heal and show you God's love. And for me, that was one of those moments that because I answered the call, because I said yes to that invitation, I am where I am today. And I, wow. I thank that person yeah. um, from the bottom of my heart. I love her to death. And, and that was um, five years ago. And that was five years ago Come on, ago give today. it up for yes. life groups in the chat. Woo! If you're in the chat right now, shout out your life group leader. Tell them you love them, how much you appreciate it. And that was amazing. Thank you, Herminia. So point number two is real friends cheer for you. They know you at your worst, but still believe you for your best. And so I've experienced this before in my own life. And my best friend who I mentioned earlier, there's a time in my life that I, I just was living pretty reckless. And he never stopped cheering for me. He never stopped connecting with me. He never stopped reaching out to me. I've known this guy since we were in kindergarten. And we're still best friends to this day. I was best man in his wow. wedding. And so... Uh, this is how much he loved me at my worst. Like, he was like, man, what's up, bro? What are you doing? And I was like, uh, playing some Madden, hanging out with a friend. Let, let's call her Mary Jane. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. and, and so, like, this, I mean, he, you know, never done really anything like that in his entire life. He came over the house, literally sat there next to me as we hung out with Mary Jane, played Madden with me for about an hour and a half. Love you, bro. Take care. See you. And something like that has, has I, I, it's just been so encouraged, but that memory yeah. to know what it's like to have somebody there for you, cheering Absolutely. for you at yes. your worst, believing for your best. And, and so I wanted to ask um, Nicole, how have real friends celebrated your strengths, but covered your weaknesses? Not, not hid them, right. but That's covered good. them. And so I, I think about um, like a football game, and whenever there's a fumble and somebody fumbles the ball, let's say it's the quarterback, the, the announcer yells, fumble, right? And then everybody <laughs> on the field should, if you're on the offense, let's say it's the offense, 
should jump and dive on the ball, right? Because right. they're like, it doesn't matter who dropped the ball. Right. We need to cover it right. because we need to protect the person that dropped it. But you always see those cats that are like too nervous to jump on the ball. And they're like the ones who get paid the most. Yeah, they're like, yeah. eh. <laughs> you can kind of see them like hesitating. But all the guys that are like in it for, you know, they're in it to win it. They're like, I don't care if I get hurt in the process. My teammate dropped the ball. I'm going to cover it. I'm going to cover them in grace. I'm going to love on them. And so I want to ask you, how has real friends celebrated your strengths but covered your weaknesses here at Heart Ref? You know, I think that it's like hard to find people that will see you in a really low place and not kick you down. Man. And finding somebody that sees you low and is like, no, let's get back up. Let's get back up. Yeah. And if someone else comes in and tries to push them back down, it's like, nah, be like, I'm right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You nah, ain't gonna come for her. Like, and I'm the same way as a friend. Like, if I see my homegirl down, like, nobody's coming for her. Come like, yeah. and that's how they, that's how it is. It goes both ways. And right. I think that people can't be a part of your success if they don't want to be a part of, part of your failures. Mm. And I feel like for me, I failed so many times in my life as we all have yeah. and I have a friend that I've been best friends with since kindergarten and she's seen me in the same place <laughs> doing similar things and going back to the same kind of sin doing the same yeah. stuff and she was always like no girl like it's gonna be okay one day like one day mm. you're just gonna be glowing you're gonna be happy like it's gonna be all right and now like I finally reached that place and although she's all the way back in Chicago because that's where I'm from but um, <laughs> just a little some, <laughs> had to bring that in there but um, she always celebrates me, even from a distance across country. Like she'll see mm. me post something. She'll be like, I'm so happy for you. Like yeah. she'll text me. And if we have a conversation on the phone, we talk for two hours and it's like, we picked up where we left off and she always covered me. And I know that like to the day I die, that's how it's going to be. So it's, it's awesome to have friends that are around you for all the seasons of your life. And it's important to choose those friends wisely. So. Yeah. And, and it's like you said, you know, instead of like kicking you while you're down or like kind of rubbing it in your face, like the announcers, I, I imagine, you know, like people in life, they're like shouting out like what you've done, they're like alcohol instead oh, of like fumble. Yeah. They're like, you know, pornography. Yeah. Like, bro, like, come on, man. Like, I feel you know like, what I mean? Like, can you cover me? You know? Yeah. And so I, I love that. Thank you for sharing that so much. So point number three is real friends challenge you. They love where you are but love you too much to leave yeah. you there. And so Pastor Abe said this. He said, what makes friendships messy is what makes them meaningful. Mm -hmm. what, what makes them messy is what makes them meaningful. And so to go back to the story of the paralyzed man, he's being carried by these four guys. And the Bible doesn't say how far he carried them. I mean, maybe we could kind of do a study and figure it out. But I don't know if you guys have ever picked up another human being. They can be pretty heavy you know what oh, I mean yeah. and so I'm imagining these guys like they're picking him up on a mat I don't know if it was a yoga mat you know what I mean <laughs> whatever it was but they're carrying this dude like trying to get him to Jesus and I love the the um the the uh, the version that Pastor Abe read from because it said that they dug a hole in the the roof of the house so these guys, it didn't say that they used tools. Like, who knows? They got up there and were like, man, we got to do whatever it takes to get our guy to Jesus. And so maybe they were digging, like I'm imagining with their hands and their fingernails were all dirty and grungy. And maybe there was some pigeon poop up there. Yeah. I don't know. But these guys are just like so focused on trying to make sure that their friend gets healed by Jesus, that they were like, I'm going to go through the dirt with you. I'm going to yeah. do whatever it takes not to become your Messiah and to like carry that Messiah complex, right. which I think yeah. ha can happen in the church, but just to say, I'm going to do what it takes to lead you to Jesus. Because like you said, we all end up at the feet of Jesus. Yeah. I'm going to do what it takes to get you there. And so um, I, I guess I'll just throw this question up out there to, and you guys can knock it out of the park. Maybe one of you, What's it been like for you here at Heart Rev to have somebody say like, look, I'm going to I'm not going to give up on you. I'm going to carry you. I mean, Caleb, you kind of mentioned a little bit about Pastor Ape saying I'm going to pick you up every day at 12 o'clock. And they just were like not giving up on you. They carried you. You knew that there were times where you should have been like, you know what? I'm good. Just leave me here. Like, I'm good. Like, you know what I mean? Just just move on. And they're like, no, like, let's keep moving forward 
together. So I'll ask you, Herminia, let me know your thoughts on that. Um, well, I think like Nicole was saying, you know, having that friend that knows you through all your seasons. You know, Pastor Abe mentioned we should, we don't need to let everyone know all of our business, but we do need to let one person know. Yeah. And, and that person should definitely be the person, you know, like in Proverbs says, as iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. You know, we want that person to be iron. We don't want them to be fake. We don't want yeah. them to be plastic. That's we good. want them to be iron. We want to be able to grow through this together. Mm. We want to be able to, you know, carry them if they're down. Like, hey, are you going to round up three other people to help carry yeah. me to my yeah. blessing? Because <laughs> I'm weak right now. I can't take it. You know what I mean? It's just, um, but um, definitely finding those leaders, like in your life group leader, in your Team 12 leader, the pastors of the church that are amazing and always willing to pull you through. And, um, you know, more than anything, accepting you as family mm. and sitting next to you yeah. like family and truly saying, I'm going to come and pick you up at 12 o'clock, Caleb, and showing up. You know, action speaks louder than words. And we can know our Bible from beginning to end. But at the end of the day, if we're not modeling the message, come on, you know, mm-hmm. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then just well, kind of like touching on what yeah. Herminia was saying, I like it's like a lot of times we're talking about this and like talking about having those friends there. And like when we talk about the story about the paralyzed man, we want to see ourselves like in the role of the man that's being carried. But like we also have to think like we have to be one of those four friends. Absolutely. Like it has like. As much as we're like, oh, I need a friend that's going to be down for me. It's like, well, are you down for those people that are next to you? That's right. Like, I need a friend that's going to carry me up to the roof. It's like, well, are you going to carry one of your friends up? Because it's like, it's easy to want people to be there for you when you're down. But it's like, when you're at the mountaintop and your friend's Mm -hmm. like, hey, I'm at the valley. I need you to come get me. Yeah. Are you going to be like, yeah, like, okay, I got (laughs) you. You know? Yeah. Maybe tomorrow, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Are you going to be the person? Like, you like, dude, I need someone to like, come intervene in my life when I'm down. Like, peep it on Instagram. See that I'm not good and like, hit me up. But like. If you if you see someone else in that situation, like, are you gonna answer that call mm. in that situation? Yeah, and sometimes we're just leading while we're bleeding. You wow. know what I mean? It's true. Yeah. It's just like, uh, I know, I got you, Caleb. Yeah. I'm hurting right now, but it's okay. <laughs> I got you. You know, like, let's go, Nikki. You know. Um, but yes, having you know, I can going back to the story. Like, I can only imagine how many miles they had to carry their friend. And then they saw all of these people. Like, you can imagine, like, you know, even if you just imagine a concert in itself and you're like, when you're trying to get to the front and you're like, oh, excuse me, excuse (laughs) me, you know, or or not really saying excuse me, but, you know. (laughs) (laughs) But um, I, like, for me, it's like, you know, like Nikki was saying, when when our friend is there, are we going to be there to be like, yo, man, no, sorry. Yep. Don't don't talk about them. Don't say this about them. They're going through them. We're believing for the best. We're gonna speak life into them. We're gonna pray that pray for them. Yeah. Lift them up and continue to just remind them of the promises that God has for them. Because if He can do it for me, He can do it for her. Yeah. Yeah. Also, too, like I think Pastor Abe said something, and maybe not in the message, but he always says like you need to have somebody in front of you, someone beside you, and someone behind you. Amen. And when we're a leader and we have someone behind us, that's when we're covering them and that's when we're leading them and we're taking them to the promise and we're taking them to the blessing and then we have our homegirl or our homeboy that's like there fighting those battles with us and then now we're, we're at the top and we're like, okay, I need somebody that's going to be there. And I think that it's important to have keep that in mind and make sure that when we're a leader that we're amplifying those things and that we're being the leader that we wanted when we were down and yeah. not forgetting like how low that we were when we needed somebody. Mm. And it's just that's just super important. And I think to have friendships that don't they don't want you to be comfortable in like your mess. It's like mm. they want you to grow, and in order to grow, you have to be a little bit uncomfortable and to have those friends that are like, hey, like, call it like it is yeah. and yeah. make you a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. Like, yeah. okay, you're wrong for this. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I yeah, need yeah, friends yeah. in my life that are like, girl, you're wrong. <laughs> like, I need that. Like, that's a good friend to me. I don't yeah, need somebody that's sure. like, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Like, no, yeah. no, 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 no. I want to know when I'm wrong, and I right. want to have those homegirls that are like, 
hey girl, like you need to do better in this area. And that was so good. Thank you guys so much for sharing. There's one last line I wanted to share that Pastor Abe said, and it was this, our church isn't about the program. It's about the people. Amen. And I feel like we've spent tonight talking about that, about it's not about the program. It's about the people. It's about the people we're growing with. It's about the people who are challenging us, cheering us, and just encouraging us, not enabling us, but equipping us. And so we want to let all of you know that are watching, maybe you're not as connected to friendships like some of our guests here tonight, which thank you, Caleb, Herminia, and Nicole. We love you guys. But we want to let you know that Heart Rev is a church that you can call home. We want you to be a part of the family. We want to grow in friendship with you. And we want to let you know there is a place for you here. And also next Wednesday night, we hope that you tune in for another episode of The Breakdown, where we talk about the message and just discuss about how it affected our lives, impacted us. And also every Sunday morning at 9 and 11 a.m., we have church online for our English viewers, also a 1 p.m. Spanish service. And we also have church at night here right outside in our parking lot. It's a beautiful setup. Our Spanish service is at 5 p.m. and then 6.30 in English. We love you and we'll see you next week on another episode of The Breakdown. Mm -hmm.